<clears throat> Hi, Hannah. Okay. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Okay. Today, we're going to go into self-compassion and self-love because I noticed yeah. how important that is. Would you like to take over? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just important because sometimes people can get stuck in loops in their head where either they're like, unappreciative or ungrateful about the things around them people around them or a lot of times it's actually their relationship with themselves that gets reflected outwards so I think that's pretty important to talk about yes to have the awareness and uh, um, knowing actually is that you know we our own actually projected out a world you know and it's a very virtual, you know, conceptual world, and uh, which is that, you know, um, it's looping of our own thoughts, but many of us not notice that, you know, and then we are affected by other people's behavior, you know, some of that behavior could be self-centered, you know, reflecting of that person's thought and that person's way of thinking, and actually really don't have anything to do with us. But then mm -hmm. we emotionally gets, you know, caught. Can you talk yeah. about mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important for, well, it's like good when you can sort of zoom out and you can look at things. So things are not so personal and things are also like you can see yourself living in the way that you live and thinking the way that you think. And then the way that that self interacts with everybody else is very impersonal, right? Like it, it's just learning to accept that self. Yes, yes. So uh, understanding of the limited perspective of our mm -hmm. own perception, you know? Right, That's yeah. Way of looking at interpreting what other people say, you know, interpreting of the world you know, right? That's a very, very unlimited view. Yeah. Um, but of course, is that by changing that perspective, you know, by working on that broadening of that perspective, you know, more objectively seeing the world, it will make a whole difference. And that's uh, where, you know, a disciplined kind of like, you know, have practice is very important. Yeah. And like, once we can build that compassion and like being able to objectively view things, um, that just automatically translates into everything else. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so why? Why is that? Like, for example, is that, you know, um, why a practice can broaden our perspective, you know, energetic? I felt that, you know, for example, you know, getting into a routine practice, you know, for over three years and every day, every day following that routine, doesn't matter what happened in the rest of the world, you just dedicated that to yourself. And I felt that that's one of the best self-love too. Like I asked some of the people, you know, um, you know, like, do you do self-care? And many of them, they immediately answer, yes, I do. You know, when I feel down, I go on a vacation and I really, really have a wonderful time. Yes, that's one way, right? You know, and that helps too. You know, it uh, probably can change, you know, uh, turn around of your perspective a little, you know. But the thing is that, you know, to really having a everlasting energetic shift, you know, and for people that are depressed, you know, to get out of depression, I think that a daily routine is so important and it's one of the best self-loving too. Yeah, and I think that there's a big difference between like, there's methods of self-care, like, okay, you can take a break from life, you can go on a vacation, um, but at that point, you're sort of escaping your reality, right? So it's um, the other side of self-care can be like, you're getting to know yourself, you're getting to know your thoughts, um, you're really learning how to accept and live with yourself in reality. 
So I think that that's just, it's a tool that's much more like can be used to your benefit in your day-to-day -day life and dealing with daily stressors and everything. Um, whereas the other side is just, you know, you're escaping it, right? <laughs> well, one way of escaping it, right? Not a facing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. And actually is that it's uh, one of those things that you felt, you know, temporarily you escaped, you know, right? Mm -hmm. And but actually is that it always catch up with you, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I often say is that, you know, we are not aware, you know, actually every day our life, you know, our work, you know, is actually, you know, is practicing us, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but when we begin to develop a, a a daily practice, you know, then we begin to develop a self-awareness, you know, and then we are not in that, you know, passive kind of like a being, you know, driving to craziness, you know, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we're just aware of what's actually happening and what's, um, a lot of times we don't fully know what we're processing subconsciously. But when we're very aware of our thoughts and our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, we can sort of shorten the gap between now and when we're processing things. Mm. Yes. So one is of uh, sensing, like our senses, you know, right? Immediately mm -hmm. receive, you know, we immediately receive reactions from other people you know our emotions immediately react you know right so that's kind of like you know like so we 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 have a perception we have a perception our reaction from the body you know is going on and then at the same time we have a mental process you know we mentally interpreting of everything sometimes you know we turn that against us you know, when somebody was not appreciating us, we thought, okay, I'm going to work harder, you know, and, and I'm going to work past midnight, you know, but then what happened is that, you know, still you're not appreciated, you know, and, and then you become more destructive to yourself, you know, and then yourself will uh, uh, complain, yourself, you know, criticizing, you know, judgment, all of that kicks in. And, and, and that's, uh, you know, we are being driven, you know, by the emotional mental process. Right. And you can even like look at it uh, in a much more physical sense. You can kind of tell how quickly you're processing things by noticing when you get sick or you fall into illness, you can sort of see what led up to it, right? Like retrospectively notice um, how events in your life, how quickly they became illness or sickness. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, or if it took a really long time for it to become that, right? Like you can see how quickly your body and mind are processing things with mm -hmm. that method, which is, you know, interesting if that ever happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I think that what happened is that for a lot of people is that um, actually is that let the body is often already, you know, has been for a long time reacting to certain certain situations, you know. Then, That's what often happens. That's with a lot of people. But um, as you develop more sensitivity and you can process things faster, it will be almost instantaneous. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So then that's like when you don't have like the buildup in your body, right? Like, yes, yes. Yeah. Like, for example, you know, uh, chronic illness very often mm -hmm. is actually a buildup of yeah. this wrong mental processing of happenings around us, you know? Well, it's just a very delayed processing. Yeah. A delayed processing. You know, but the body actually is that it's already being affected, you know, mm -hmm. only just that we are not aware. Of it. Yeah, so it's it's really great when people can develop the awareness and develop the 
I mean, we were talking about before self-love, self-compassion. Mm -hmm. We were maybe talking about that in a mind sense, but mm -hmm. if we talk about that in a body sense, that that really in the end benefits us and really aids longevity. Yes, yes, 